What's up guys, Magic Navs here, and today I'm bringing to you some Modern Warfare knife only gameplay. It's kind of been a while since I've brought some knife only content to you guys, but a uh, couple uh, updates I can kind of bring to you is um, about a week ago I finally got a chance to play some airsoft again. Uh, my local field uh, just start is kind of in its sort of stage one phase at the moment. It's an indoor field and um, it's like in this big warehouse. It's like a nice balance of like uh, medium to long distance. Well, a bit of everything, but they've they've really changed up the field um, during the quarantines. They really took the time to like uh, renovate a bunch of stuff, add some new stuff and improvements. So um, like there's a lot of like CQB uh, spaces or like areas now. So it's it's become much more of a CQB field kind of type of field as opposed to kind of medium and long range uh, field which personally I kinda liked more that's just me though because I'm not like CQB is like is it does it's pretty challenging you're gonna be shot up up close unless you can find the right spots to give yourself enough distance to react and stuff so yeah I just you know that's the thing about um, where I play it's I mean I guess they're trying to be a bit more uh, like trying to be more of a CQB field it seems like but you know I'm trying to adapt to the f to the new field I only played it once obviously but um, hopefully uh, yeah they'll you know they'll they'll they do change their maps every so often so hopefully I can kind of uh, get more used to it I guess you know so we'll see but anyways, uh, other things like um, I'm obviously Cold War for Black Ops. It, the trailer came out for not the multiplayer that comes out September 9th, but I'll probably do a little commentary video about that as well. And um, yeah, that would be nice. It's honestly, it's something that Cold War like the, the this style of the game should have been done right after the first Black Ops. I've said it over and over again, but I'll probably uh, continue saying, talking about it in like my next commentary for it. But yes, uh, we'll save that for for the next video. Um, but uh, in uh, Modern Warfare news, I did get the uh, dual swords, the dual kadachis and stuff. Um, specifically, the uh, Japanese sword. Why I'm gonna. Hopefully, um, not this, ne not the next gameplay, but hopefully in in a, in the next few, I'll be able to uh, uh, showcase uh, some gameplay because I really like the uh, dual Kadachis, and I want to kind of give you my my uh, review on them, comparing to just like a normal combat knife in this game, because it's definitely, in my opinion, it's it's a little bit better. It's it's definitely better actually to uh, knife with compared to like the like the dual sticks or the typical combat knife but anyways the main the main um, topic that I want to talk about today in this video you probably based based it on the title so sorry for the long intro but and uh, updates but David Blaine um, on September 2nd if if you already if you don't already know he pulled off one, in my opinion, one of the most beautiful stunts that anybody has ever pulled off. Not just by David Blaine himself, but just by anyone in general. And it was called Ascension. And what he did was, in fact, and this apparent this idea apparently came from a movie that he watched um, as a child with his mother, in that a kid f literally floats up into the air with uh, a bunch of helium balloons and that image just kind of stuck with him and um, so what he in fact did is he got a bunch of helium balloons these are gigantic helium balloons and uh, for the record guys I'm gonna leave the link in the description of this uh, video so you, if you haven't watched it um, it was uh, a live thing I didn't I didn't quite watch it live because I was a little uh, uh, late at the time, but um, yeah, I, I, you can watch it like it's on YouTube. It's like a YouTube original thing, um, but um, you literally just got compiled a bunch of helium balloons together. 
um, and he w- ended up floating about I think it was twenty five thousand feet into the air, and then once he reached that height, he cut himself loose from the balloons, descended down, and eventually parachuted, and he successfully landed um, on the ground without any issues or injuries like that, and. It was freaking beautiful and just amazing in general. Like, out of all, like, if you follow David Blaine a lot, like myself, I've been a big fan of him since I was a kid. He was the reason why I got into magic and the very first magician that I ever saw on TV. And I was even lucky enough to um, see him perform live um, when he visited uh, uh, Toronto, Canada, like, a few years back. But... Yeah, he's like the reason why I got into magic and I got a lot of my style of magic from him. But um so yeah, out of like he's known for his magic, but he's also known for his um death defying stunts, you know, with holding his breath or um being in a frozen in a block of ice or going for like 44 days without food and wa- without food, etc. Um and like yeah, all these different stunts, but there was usually there was always something that went wrong or just it got to a point where you just couldn't bear it anymore you know but uh for this like he went through a lot of measures to uh make sure this would be done properly and he had to also go through a lot of licensing and legal matters to uh get this done he had to get like a pair he had to get a hot air balloon license he had to get a pro skydiving license um, which I think you had to jump at least a certain amount of times um, bef- until you could be considered like a pro d- skydiver and whatnot. Um, so, and then he had to also like I think because of this weird contraption of the helium balloons, they had to like go through the f the uh, in the the flight uh, the uh, air traffic control like laws and stuff, right? Kind of considering this as like a experimental uh like like aircraft kind of thing you know and they had to add like things like electronics so that airplanes won't accidentally fly into the area and like you know risk hurting him right so it was pretty it was pretty elaborate in terms of what measures they had to go through in order to put this whole thing together but the in the end it just turned out amazing part of in part of the challenge that came with this stunt was the fact that the higher you go up in the air, um, you start to lose um, oxygen, and it gets much colder up up in the sky as well. Um, initially, they were going to do it in, in New York, where David Blaine normal like is his hometown, but they had to change it to Arizona because the weather conditions had to be perfect. But um, yeah, when he's up in the air. He had a little like a rebreather or something like that to provide him some oxygen because the air was the amount of oxygen was much less um, in the air. But eventually, you know, there really weren't any hiccups. Once he got to twenty five thousand feet around there, he was able to just descend perfectly down. And uh, the best part was that his daughter um, Dessa was there to see it all um, firsthand. And honestly, I don't think uh, like she or him will ever forget that moment it was a really beautiful moment between them um and what david blaine accomplished but um let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below again check out the uh, special um in the description below if you haven't and uh hope to see you guys in my future videos take care guys